2014 BFL All-American presented by Chevrolet is getting ready to kick off. Biggest tournament I've ever qualified for. These are just great, great fishermen. Some of the best anglers come out of the BFLs. What other way can I have to fish for $120,000 cash? To win it, yeah, that can catapult you all the way to the top and you can go ahead and start fishing the FLW Tour. It does, it changes careers. Your 2014 BFL All-American champion. Scouts are going to push them deeper early. I'm catching them deep. There's fish everywhere. This place is awesome fishery. It's got a lot of bass in it. Hey, everybody. Jason Harper along with Chris Jones. Welcome to the 2014 BFL All-American Championship presented by Chevy on Wilson Lake in Florence, Alabama. Chris, does it get more exciting than the All-American? No, it doesn't, Jason. You know, this road started back last year in 2013, and here we are, the grand finale of them all, man. And what a great field. 49 boaters, 49 co-anglers vying for the All-American Champion. That's a long Launching pad right wow. there towards a professional career on the Walmart FLW Tour, Jason. It qualifies, you win this thing, you qualify for the Cups this year. The BFL is made up of 24 circuit divisions. You take the top 40 boaters and co-anglers from each one of those 120 tournaments during the season. They advance on to the regionals. The top six from each regionals then come here and qualify for one of the longest running championships in all of bass fishing, the BFL All-American. Now let's talk about Wilson Lake. I mean, this thing has really flexed its muscles this week. Are you surprised? Not at all. It's the perfect place for the All-American, Jason, because it's a Tennessee River impoundment. It's full of fish. You find mega schools of bass out there on those ledges. Large mouth, small mouth. Guys can catch them deep. They can go shallow. They can flip docks, flip brush piles on the banks. You can go up to the dam, fish the concrete, fish the current. You can catch them. It's very diversified. You can catch them a lot of different ways. And that really is, is the key for these guys this week because um, on day one, you saw a lot of guys catch them on the ledges, but a lot of guys were catching them shallow. Jamie Rampy throwing a frog all day. You know, he had over 16 pounds on day one. These guys are having fun catching them a variety yeah. of ways. This lake has got it's got it all. One of the guys that was red hot after day number one coming out of the Ozark Division is Marcus Sakura. Man, oh, what's man. he got going on? Man, you know what? He, he is fishing a river channel ledge, okay? It's a bar that sticks out into the river channel, and he's found a little cut. He, he describes it as a half moon cut on the side of this river bar. To be honest with you, all it is is just a little horseshoe in the actual bar itself, and that current is just piling in there, and those fish are just stacking in there every single day. Two mega schools of bass. They're full of five, six, and seven pounders, and he, he's throwing a table rock a shad colored crankbait getting them fired up in about 10 foot of water then he follows it up with a chartreuse colored crankbait he says one cast after another he caught over 26 pounds his coin caught over 20 pounds he said i think they're going to be there for the rest of this tournament well it's got a lot of pressure on him he's got a lot of guys that are very successful in the bfl organization that are hot on his heels guys like timothy feller you got todd castledine out of nacogdoches texas he's got four bfl wins under his belt george capitan he's there right now in the hunt oh, we've yeah. seen him on the walmart flw tour Today is cut day. We narrow the field down to the top 10 boaters and co-anglers, getting closer to the third and final day, getting closer to crowning this year's BFL All-American Champion. Who's it going to be? Whose life is going to potentially change? Let's head out on the water and see how it all shapes up. I've got a little bit of deficit. I know Marcus is on him pretty good, so I don't think he's going to slow down any. So I might just have to sit there and go go as big as I can and, and worry about what happens on day three. I'm just trying to make it to day three. You can go catch him shallow anytime you want to, but you're never going to you're not going to win it up there. I ain't caught a big one up shallow yet. I've caught 30 fish up shallow and not one of them has been over two and a half pounds. So there's no, really no reason to go up there when Marcus is up there catching 26 pounds. 
I know there's big ones here. It's one of the few places that has just really big fish. And luckily you can catch a lot of small fish too, so I mean you can not worry about a limit, which is, not, I guess, it's always nice. I don't care what lake is on. It's nice to at least catch some. It's definitely a little bit slower this morning. This, this time yesterday I had 17, 18 pounds. I just lost, I lost three and caught two, so they're still here. It's probably just a matter of them getting set up. It's just a shallow bar. It's got shells on it. And there's one little old spot in here that for some particular reason, the currents cut a little horseshoe out of it. And those fish, there's just a little bit of bigger rock mixed in with those shells. And those fish are just sitting in there. Right there on that little horseshoe cut. This morning we had a big front come through here about four o'clock in the morning. Now we got this high pressure backing into it. So it may take them a little while to get going. Throwing a six cents crush 300 series crankbait does a good job getting in there and kicking up the dirt on them shells, kicking up them shells. Where you at, big girls? Where you at? There's one. That's a good one. Coming to me. Can't catch her. Oh, not as good as what I thought she was. Ooh, that would have been bad. You know, these guys are so good and it's all American. They, you can't give them a break. And you got to make every cast count in this thing and just hope, fortunate enough, that a big one chooses you because unfortunately we don't get to choose the size that bite. I know what to do to go catch some big ones. I just would like to have a little more weight in the box before I do that because I might go out there and not catch a fish. With only two in the box, I'm coming over here to flip grass, do something I'm confident in, and try to get a limit in the boat and then we'll go back out to about 20 feet of water where I caught the six pounder yesterday and hopefully manage to catch one or two of them. I made the All-American once before and I, I finished six. I got to fish the last day. BFLs are, the, you know, the grassroots and they're just, they're a lot of fun. Meet a lot of interesting co-anglers. There's one. Yeah, I'm surprised it took that long. <laughs> Old Medlock double weed guard jig. Where were you with the net? <laughs> the Walmart BFL All American is brought to you by Straight Talk. Same phones, same networks, half the cost. Mercury Marine, 75 years of marine excellence. Walmart, save money, live better. Find, navigate, dominate with Lawrence. Kellogg's, from great starts come great things. And by Plano, protect your passion. I got it, baby. There you go, brother. It's a great biggin'. Oh, boy. It's one of the most prestigious tournaments in bass fishing, the BFL All-American. And right now, Marcus Sakura from the Ozark Division is having a great day out on the water. You just gotta catch what bites, I mean, you know, it's one of those special spots that, another big one. A spot that has catapulted him into the lead. Wilson Lake is part of the Tennessee River system in Northern Alabama. And although it doesn't possess the grass flats of neighboring Lake Wheeler or the ledges of Pickwick, Marcus is finding plenty of fish to add to his impressive day one haul. You know, in practice, I found these fish and I didn't know their potential because I didn't want to be seen anywhere. And yesterday I saw their potential and <laughs> starting to get there today. Marcus is adding to his huge lead and really taking control of this tournament. For the rest of the guys on the water, the trip to the scales at the end of the day may leave them feeling inadequate. To be able to find a school like this in a tournament like this, and to have them to yourself and have them work out, it's, it's really been a dream come true. 
Still got a little more work to do though, so we ain't done yet. It's been a rough morning. There was a large crowd here earlier this morning. Not many people caught uh, fish. I just caught my first keeper probably 30 minutes ago. And they started generating power here five minutes ago, and hopefully they'll, uh, these fish will start schooling up and eating hard. What I heard is that it, it could be one here, and you just have to stick it out all day. Fellers working around at least six other boats, and typically fishing the dam in summertime is a great place to ambush bass who are in turn waiting to ambush bait fish. But the big bass aren't stacked up here like most of the guys believe. Fish, 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 fish. Oh, he came off. Oh, no, he's there. He's there. Thank you, sir. Winner, winner, fish for dinner. It's for the kids at home. Feller picks off a bass, but it might not be enough to stay in the top 10. Meanwhile, Todd Castledine is holding his ground and fishing slow. A big one. She was on there the whole time. It ain't huge, but she'll call. I was like, I was like, yeah, I don't know. When she hit it, I was like, man, that kind of felt like it bite. And I reeled down, I was like, no. I reeled down, I'm like, man, that's just slack right there. And I'll take them. I really think that that weather yesterday, I mean, everywhere I went, we got bit almost immediately. The fish were just, they were chomping with it being overcast and, and windy and the barometer was, was just doing the right thing and they, the fish were eating. Guys that didn't catch them yesterday could smash them today and Guys that the wind, the wind and the weather helped, you know, could could stumble today, and not make the right adjustments. I feel like if I can catch 12 or 13 pounds, I'll make the cut. We're, we're guessing, you know, 32 pounds makes the cut. That's a little better. Oh, he clobbered it. Where were you with the net, Eulen? <laughs> Number four people dream of this stuff. Here I am living it. Hopefully I can ride this horse all the way to the winter circle. Oh, there's one. Yeah, full grown one. This is bass, we're famous. Oh God, it's a giant. It's a giant. Here we go, ready? Yes! Yep. Oh, I got her. Hey, you like apples? <laughs> Sakura showing just how good he is at multitasking. For him, this dream day could be his single best performance as an angler. At the end of day two, it was time to see if anyone else could keep pace with Marcus and find out who would make it into the final day of the 2014 BFL All-American. It was unbelievable. I was ledge fishing all day, fishing deep. Going 20 pounds and 10 ounces, losing the third place. The lake is just slap full of fish like every other Tennessee River lake. I had a eight pounder yesterday, six and a five today. It's just awesome. For me to win this tournament tomorrow will mean everything. Chance for me to maybe go pro, see what I can do in the sport. You know, great job, man. Today I decided to sit tight on one place let everybody else run around, and I will try to just do my best. 18 pounds and 12 ounces, Owen Pickett Jr. in fifth place. In that area, I'm comfortable enough to just really, to be honest with you, just to go fishing. 27 pounds, four ounces. Bottom line is I think we got the right baits and we got the right idea on what to look for, so I think everybody will be okay. After two days, it continues to be a one-man show for Marcus Sakura. One notable entry into the top 10 is Jamie Rampey. He's fishing the FLW Tour this season and skipped an event just so that he could be here and try to qualify for the Forest Wood Cup. Out there and stick to 
my ledge fishing, fish deep, throw a 10 XD and a plastic worm, a Carolina rig, and hopefully it'll come together and the fish will bite. I feel pretty confident today. So far, the spot that I found has been reloading each day. Uh, new, new and bigger fish have been moving on. Final day action for one of the longest running championships in bass fishing, the BFL All-American. And one guy since day one has had a commanding lead and here on the third and final day shows no signs of letting up. Chris Jones is with our leader right now. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, we're here with the leader, Marcus Sakura, man, who has found the mother load of all fish, man. Here we are on the final day. You're leading the All-American. You weighed in over 26 pounds on day one. Got better yesterday, over 27 pounds. Man, what's going through your mind this morning? You know, really, it's uh, I'm just trying to let it soak in, really, to be honest with you. It's uh, It's been a dream come true, and to find this, the most impressive school of fish I've ever found in my life, and to do it in an event like this, <laughs> it's uh, it hasn't even set in yet, to be honest with you. It's just been so unbelievable. So tell us about the spot, man. Did you find it in practice? And then, and then it's obviously, it's replenishing. <laughs> yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I went in there and practiced, and it was one of those spots that I just went fishing, and I threw in there, and I caught three or four in a row. And I just called it good, you know, as practice, and uh, didn't want to be seen, so I just kind of left the area and had no idea the potential it had. But when I came in there the first day, I was like, oh my goodness. Absolutely, man. You lead this thing by about 14 pounds going in the final day. But I think it'll be important to catch them early this morning. Get your confidence going and put it away quick. You don't want to leave that door open. You got nine guys behind you that are really good, too. Yeah. Yeah, they're all coming for me. I know they are, and uh, and, it, and it's mine. I just got to do what I got to do and, and not even worry about anything else. This event will qualify you for this year's Forcewood Cup, man. I know, man. It's exciting. It's exciting to see it. And I've got a lot of friends that fish the tour, and, and I see them, and I know how they're excited, and they set their goals on that. And I've got an opportunity to do it myself. So it's uh, it, it, it's an unbelievable moment. It's going to be a challenging day for the rest of the top ten as Sakura's lead seems insurmountable. But before anyone gets ready for a victory lap, just remember, it's bass fishing. And that means no one ever gives up until the last cast is thrown. They got a fish down there at 40 feet. They ain't pulled up there to eat yet. Just blows my mind, a largemouth lake, that they would exist that deep. It's one of those underwater structures. It's just a point that comes out. It's got pea gravel and a few brush piles on it, eight foot on top and surrounded by 27, you know, foot water. Yeah, 45 foot of water on this side and like 65 on that side. And it's just, it's a true ledge. I mean, it when it comes up from 45 and 60, it goes straight up to 20. Right back at his crescent-shaped hump, Marcus finds that the crankbait isn't working, and so he makes an adjustment. McCoyne picked up a worm, which was a good move on his part, and caught one, and we're gonna see if we can't get him fired up. This is the most amount of current I've seen here yet, which is good, I welcome it. I mean, the more the merrier, it's just, it's gonna concentrate them, but you might either need to try to get them fired up, or they might have just relocated on a minor basis, but they're not gonna, many fish are here, they're not gonna evacuate. Come on. Three, four, five, plus a 14 and a half pound lead. That's, I gotta catch 19 right now, we just started, so. Came out here three weeks ago, practiced for a week, and found this shell bed. This is a big shell bed, too. Normally they're not that big when you find them, the size of a car, scattered. The shell bed's all around here for 100 yards. Found other ones, but there, there's been no bait on them this week. Yep. This side. Good star, bro. Back on the jig, bro. That's all I need to know. You can throw your little worm. Four yeah. more of those, we're good. There is no tournament like the All-American. I mean, it's the best in the world here. For me to win this tournament would mean everything. It's just a life changer. It would be a dream come true. The All-American holds a special place in the hearts of bass anglers all over the country who start at the grassroots and rise through the ranks to the highest levels of the sport. You know, the BFL is a tremendous circuit. 
you're fishing against, in my opinion, some of the stiffest competition because every lake you go to, you're fishing against that lake's hometown crowd. You know, over the course of the year, they say there's like 30,000 people try to get to this one tournament. It's a hill you have to climb. It's tough to get here, and it's worth every minute. Wilson Lake has proved that it holds giant bags of five bass limits. And though Marcus Sakura started the day with a 14 pound lead, the rest of the top 10 have spread out on this Tennessee River impoundment, looking to gain some ground on the Missouri stick from the Ozark Division. Dino Murigianis has made the biggest move so far, and while his bite is getting stronger, the leader Sakura finds himself struggling. A little. Not good. With his fourth small keeper in the boat, Secure is wondering what happened to all the big fish that have been populating this small hump, thinking it might be due to the current forcing him to slow down in his presentation. Yeah, the crankbait bite has been the best for me without a doubt. But I also know from practice and from my co-anglers that they're you can slow down and you can catch a big one on the bottom. And I'm not afraid to do that. It's just with the crankbait, it's usually fast and furious, but maybe we just need to get him woken up a little bit. Yeah, I think so. Not that big, but I'll take him until I got this number five. Now they gotta catch 21. There he is. Let me net on this one. I hope it's a bass. Ooh, I threw it. Uh, did you see the size of that fish? That has been the story of my week. You see that one, Captain? Oh well, back to work. Six and a half pounder. Gone. Kevin Edwards is fishing a hump yeah. just off some shallow grass flats near the main lake and continues to get strikes. Just nothing in the game changer category yet. That'd be a limit. Not the size yet. Hopefully it'll come. Some part of the day, there's gonna be 20 pounds up here plus. If you just get them to stage up, come on up to the top, they're really up on top of that pea gravel bar. Yeah, that's, that's just when they pull there, it's easy to pick them off. Otherwise, you fish the deeper water and hope that you can get one on the bite, which they will bite. Lloyd Pickett and Kevin Edwards are both showing patience and optimism, while David Nichols is having a hard time for getting that big miss. I thought I handled that fish. I did all I could do to keep him down. Had the heat on him. It just hurts so bad this week. It's the, the second one of those and one almost that was just, I mean, just a bunch of weight that I have left on the table. There he is. Please stay on there. It's okay, this one here's captured right here. Awesome. Thank you, sir. It's nothing like that last one. Thanks, thanks, little bro. Oh, that's... Fish. And I think we, hey, hey, I just figured them out. Yeah. Like, that's the first one I caught on a crankbait. But when I got bit up there, my first one, and now you got bit, dude, I ain't caught any up there shallow like that. They're up there. We're gonna freaking catch them. Todd Castledine left his primary area early this morning and feels that he's onto a shift in the way that the bass are positioning today. One angler who's currently putting his bait right in front of some big bass is Jamie Rampy. Yeah. Freaking giant. That's a giant. Oh my god. Oh, don't come on. Right here. Right here. Boom! Boom, baby! <laughs> Play some ball now, boys. <laughs> huh? Freaking donkey, baby. Look at that one. I don't know, he's big. <laughs> Woo! Catching them, boys. I've got a school fired up of some giants. I don't know, I got at least 24 pounds in the last hour. Success in big tournaments Woo! is often found when you go against the grain of what everyone else is doing. Rampy saw most of the field looking at the ledges, so he looked at them from a different angle. 
<laughs> All American, baby. I think these fish with this current, they're moving in and out of this little, this little bay behind us. They're pulling up and down off a shelf. The top of it where we're sitting is in about six foot of water. We're throwing out in the deep, and that goes against all the grain I've ever heard of, of deep fishing, ledge fishing, or whatever. Um, we're actually sitting in and throwing out. These fish are sitting on top, facing the deep water. And when this crankbait comes up that ridge and it breaks, it breaks free, that's when they're getting it. They're just sitting there waiting on those shad to come out of that river channel. Oh, 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 there you go. All American, baby. Stroking fives, sixes. I don't know what they are, but they big, baby. They big. Got him. Uh. Woo! <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. While our top 10 battle it out from the front of the boat, the co-angler competition is just as intense. Justin Sward had a solid morning, putting him in the lead, and we'll find out later if it holds up. Meanwhile, on the boater side, Marcus Sakura started the day with a huge lead, but so far his day has been challenging. Yeah, well, I'm having to bounce around a little bit and try to get a feel for what's going on. The conditions are just so much more different right now. I mean, got way more current than we've had all week. So I'm just trying to get a feel for something a little bit different and making sure I'm not missing something obvious. And I was really hoping to be able to cull pound by pound by pound and catch a big stringer early like I have been the last two days. But looks like today is gonna be one of those grind it out and earn every single ounce. So that's what we're gonna try to do. I always wanted to say something cool, like I'm fixing to get bit on camera, because we don't say that up north. <laughs> Connecticut bred Dino Murigianis is having a great tournament here on the Tennessee River. He's moved closer to Sakura, but a hard-charging Jamie Rampy is firmly in the mix. I'm actually fishing in an offshore hump. It's like a sunken island. It's got, it's got a few points, cuts, and uh, secondary structures on it. It's out in about 15 feet of water, surrounded by about 27. And that's basically the fish's first stop after spawning, coming out to the main lake. The past couple days, they were, they were more spread out and scattered. And they were somewhere in, out deep, somewhere up shallow, somewhere on the ledge. But today, they seem to be concentrated right on the ledge, right on the shallow bed. On that time. Missed him the first time. Where in the world have y'all gone? Never in my life would I have not have thought I wouldn't have had 20 pounds by now. Yeah, give me the net. Oh God, one hook. Not very big, but it's bigger than what I got. All right, as long as I keep getting bigger. Well, the first two days, the activity was insanely good first thing in the morning. I mean, both days I've been done by now with everything that I weighed in, basically. This morning, I'm just seeing a lot of fish suspended on the graph. I don't know if that new amount of current has pushed them out, repositioned them. I don't know exactly what's going on, but as many as that were in here, I just have a hard time believing that they're in a catchable position right here right now or else we would have caught more than what we've already caught. Yep. I don't know, he smoked it. I can't tell how big he is. Not the kind of coals I'm looking for, but they all count. So Marcus Sakura is going to reach 11 pounds the hard way, which will make it even okay. more difficult for anyone to catch him. Those last two coals, I probably doubled up. They weren't big fish, but I probably just gained a couple of pounds there, so 
every ounce counts. For Kevin Edwards today, it was the morning when he got most of his bites. But like Sakura, the quality of bass has been lacking. Nip. You just have to spend a lot of time looking at the depth finders and, and trying to find those fish. And, and right now the fish are very scattered. They're not piled up like they should be this time of year. They're just getting out there really. I think it's gonna get better soon. They're just still scattered. It's, it's a grind. You really have to beat them, beat them, beat them just to come up with a good bag of fish. Yep, it's gonna be a good one. It's gonna be a real good one. <sighs> Big enough for now. Lloyd Pickett Jr. is always finding a way to get his Carolina rig going. And here it is fourth All-American appearance. The Tennessee boaters looking to make something happen. Oh, there they are. Yeah, they're down there. They're down there. I've got a rotation of uh, places that I'm, I'm moving around. I've got about 40 waypoints that are holding fish. It's a matter of pulling up to the right place, grafting it to see if they're actually still there. And if they are there and you're seeing the arches, then you know, I'll stop and make some casts. There she is. Yeah. Man, that's a keeper. Stay on, baby. Stay on. Yeah. Ooh, thank you, Lord. Off the top. Woo, all right. Ah. That'll help. Whew. Barely hooked, too. Big one. They're here, dude. I mean, they're here. There's a bite. That's a big one, too. That one kind of punked me a little bit. Hey, you want to just go ahead and try to win this thing? That's the nice thing about Wilson, I apparently, is you can call that with that. Todd Castledine made a move early in the day and then discovered the bass were positioned shallower along the ledge. He's been crushing it ever since with the classic ledge bait, a 10 inch worm. That's gonna call. It's getting, it's getting, it's getting funner, if that's a word. It's getting, it's getting, this is a fun final day, man. You don't, regardless of the outcome, that's a huge cold. Jamie Rampy knows all about the word funner as he continues to rack up the weight. I'm pretty sure there's a shad spawn on this seawall um, directly behind the boat, real shallow up on this point. I've seen a bunch of shad up there this morning. So I, I'm thinking these big ones are up there shallow. They, they come out here later on and they just sit here and they just gorge themselves. Every bit of bait that's in that creek is coming directly here. So, I mean, it's just like a buffet table. The race is coming down to the wire to see who will become the next All-American. Stay right where you are. The Walmart BFL All-American is brought to you by Motor Guide. Introducing the new XI-5 and Pinpoint GPS. Experience more at evanrude.com. Minn Kota, anywhere, anytime. Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Railback, last as long and cost less. And by Chevy, brought to you by the all new 2014 Chevy Silverado. Come on, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounder, whatever lives in here, give me one. Oh, there they are right there. All right, let's just, <laughs> we gotta do this now. How about a crazy four pound brown? Come on. I think I'm gonna cull everything I got in there in the last hour and a half is what I think. Optimism is high as the top 10 confront the last few hours of the BFL All-American. I mean, right now I'm gonna need, a, I'm probably gonna need one six just to cull probably. 
Jamie Rampy has had the day anglers dream of. The FLW Tour Pro started the day back in eighth and has shot all the way to second. Dino Mutagianis is a close third behind Rampy, having caught nearly 20 pounds of bass so far today. Todd Castledine has been stroking the worm to entice big bass like this to bite. Net. While Kevin Edwards is finding his afternoon much slower than his morning, and Lloyd Pickett Jr. is getting a lot of bites, just small ones, so he's moved again to a new area. And Marcus Sakura still has a lead, but he's caught less than half the weight that he's brought in the previous two days. Man, I just know how many big ones are down there. If we can just get one timing situation right, we can do it. It's always great starting the day with such a huge lead, but it can also be stressful, and Sakura's trying not to let it get in his head. I think I had a close to a 14 and a half pound lead. The biggest stringer caught besides mine, all tournament I think was probably 21 or so. You know, right now, if I got 14 and a half, and I think I got five that away, nine, it's 23 and a half. They'd have to catch right now to catch me. But I sure would like to remain uncatchable. This lake is so unbelievably good. Yeah. That'll help. This three pounder takes some stress off his shoulders. Meanwhile, Kevin Edwards is fishing a technique he'd prefer not to slow. This is so not my style of fishing, but. I feel like it's what I need to do is just stick with it. Would much rather run and gun and hit a bunch of places, but all this stuff has been worked on and I just can't do it. I know what lives here. It's hard for me to leave it. He's throwing a worm out into 25 to 35 feet of water and dragging it very slowly. Net, good. Ah. He'll still cull, but he's not what I wanted. Not a bad upgrade. Good fish. Good one. Woo! Yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, woo! <laughs> About a three, three and a half. Well, that's what we need. We've got current coming through here. And what it does, it pushes bait fish up onto this point. There he is, that's a good one. The fish are staging up down low. You know, when we first came up on it, you can see the arches holding in about 25 feet. But those are fish that the current has kicked in and they're, they're getting Come in on, position baby, to stay feed. On. So what we're doing now stay is on. sitting up and throwing out and pulling back up, you know, through the fish that are suspended and trying to get these bites. Whew. There you go, baby. <laughs> oh, they're cracking me up, man. Oh, God, that's a big one. That's a big one. <clears throat> oh, he's not as big as that. Oh, he come off. God almighty. Man, that was the best bite I had all day, too. That sucker picked it up and started cruising with it. You know what? <clears throat> I just worry about the things I can't control, and I can't control that, so. It is what it is. It hurts, it stings, it's frustrating, but it's gotta be forgotten. To catch them like this on the last day of a tournament like this is just, it's, it's awesome. I made a couple cuts and, and things of that nature and just never been able to catch them on that last day when it matters. Today we're putting it together. There he is. It's a big one. Oh, that's, oh, he broke my line. Oh my gosh, that was a giant. That was another one in that six, seven pound range. No one knows what weight the other competitors have. And so as much as Rampy likes his chances today, he's still not sure that it's gonna be enough. The same for Mutagianis. He started quickly this morning and has around 20 pounds in the live well, but he can't be sure it's enough. And so he continues to fish as hard as possible up until the last cast. Yep. 
Yep. Good one. Oh yeah. That's right, boys and girls. One every four hours is good with me. I'm all right. Woo! Man, does that feel good. The crowning of the next All-American champion is just moments away. Who will take home the title? Find out next. I left it all on the playing field, and that's all you can do. Time on the water is over for the competitors in the 2014 BFL All-American. It was tough in the morning. Once I figured out where they were, we had them on that, on that ledge drop, and they were all stacked on there. This evening it was, it looks like three to four pound fish. So better fish moved up with the current pulling. Today was really, really tough, really, really grinding, but I caught a limit and sometimes that's all you can do. The first group to take the stage are the co-anglers who fished from the back of the boat. And for Justin Sward, who sacked over 20 pounds today, the moment of truth is at hand. You need 21 pounds and four ounces. Here we go, five today. 16 pounds, six ounces. Your BFL All-American champion is Justin Sward. Wow! I'm just so appreciative of these boaters. They, they, they came and did all the pre-fishing before the cutoff and found these deep fish. And then here we do show up and get in the boat with them. So uh, I owe it as much to the, to the pros as anything, you know. And, it, and it's just a huge blessing. Justin Sword, your co-angler, BFL All-American champion for 2014. Starting in eighth place, his second time to the All-American. He's got two BFL wins, 18th top 10, and does he have a bag of fish? Jamie Rampey. To take over the lead for Marcus Sakura, you need 18 pounds and two ounces, five bass limit, raw weight up. 26 pounds and six ounces. You're the new leader. 61 pounds and 12 ounces. Wow. 14 pounds, 13 pounds, 17 pounds, 18 pounds, eight ounces. That moves you to second place with 54 pounds and 15 ounces. Rampy stays in the hot seat and the lead as angler after angler failed to top his three-day cumulative weight. Dino, put them in there, man. Looks like you had a pretty good day today. Now, I'll tell you what, Jamie, why don't you come up here and take a look? This is going to be close, man. To dethrone Jamie Rampy, you need 22 pounds and four ounces. You ready? Go. You ready? I'm ready. 22 four. Here we go. Five today for Dino Worth. Let it breathe. 22 pounds, three ounces. Wow! Here we go. He led on day one, led on day two. Can he go wire to wire and be this year's champion? From Osage Beach, Missouri, Marcus Sakura. So he came into today in first place. Jamie Rampy with a big stringer today, took the hot seat. But here's what you need to be crowned BFL All-American Champion and to put your ticket to this year's Forest Wood Cup, the Mecca of all championships, where the winning pro will receive $500,000. You need seven pounds, 13 ounces. Five today worth. 12 pounds, five ounces. Your BFL All-American Champion is Marcus Sakura. Wow. A hundred grand, Marcus Sakura. And since I've gotten here, my practice was unbelievable. My last two days have been a dream come true. Today, not so much. And the thing about it is, I mean, you know, you're catching 26 and then you catch 27. But then what happened today, the schools were completely gone. I think all that extra current blew them out and they were completely gone. And me and my, my co-anglers and I had two awesome co-anglers. In the last two days off that one school, we had 100 pounds of bass. And that's something to be proud of. Your 2014 BFL All-American Champion, Marcus Sakura. 
Marcus Sakura earns a slot into bass fishing's biggest payday, the Forest Wood Cup. Of course, he earned a decent paycheck as well to go along with his title of All-American. To get the most comprehensive coverage of the hundreds of BFL events all across the country, or to find details about the lures and patterns used by the top pros, just go to flwoutdoors.com.